everyone. Today I want to introduce you to Maria Sibylla Marian. She was a Dutch artist and one of the first people to study the life cycle of insects. 300 years ago, people knew that birds hatched from eggs, but many still thought that insects came from dirt or from rotting food. This isn't a finished work, but they're sketches from a book where she took notes on what she saw. Before photography, this was the only way to record things for research. Marian collected flowers and insects for her stepfather to paint when she was little, and soon she began painting them herself. When she was 13, she began raising silkworms and sketching their lives. As an adult, Marion continued studying insects. She kept boxes and jars of them in her kitchen. Do you think the kitchen's a good place to keep insects? She made engravings of her paintings, and then she turned them into books for artists who couldn't collect their own insects to study. She painted with watercolors, and, since this was before printed pictures had colors, would sometimes hand paint over the prints of her work. Despite being best known for her plant and butterfly illustrations, she also showed the less pretty side of nature. She saw tarantulas in Suriname, and she painted one eating a hummingbird. For years afterwards, people didn't think that that was true to life. Just a few years ago, scientists named a six-inch bird-eating tarantula after her. Would you want a really big hairy spider named in your honor? Marion usually painted caterpillars on the plants that they ate. She did an entire book of them. Here are two versions of the illustration that face the title page. Look how different the same book looks when the copies are hand-painted. The berries are even different colors. This shows the life cycle of the silkworm moth that she studied. Look at the leaves. Can you find the eggs? Can you see the caterpillars that hatched from those eggs? Caterpillars grow so fast that they split their skin for a bigger one every few days. Marion said it was like a person pulling off a shirt. Do you see the holes that the caterpillars left when munching on the leaves? I'm not finding the cocoon that they wrap themselves in. Can you find one? I do see the moths ready to lay more eggs, though. To learn about different insects, Marion traveled with her younger daughter from the Netherlands and Europe across the Atlantic Ocean to visit Suriname in South America. She was there for almost two years, and when she came home, she made a book big enough for her paintings to be shown life-size. So it had tiny birds, ants of all sizes, and butterflies and spiders bigger than her hands. This is the last page of the book, a giant owl butterfly with its caterpillar. Can you see the chrysalis tucked in the leaves? Marion tried to group the creatures that she saw together in life together on the page. Looking closely at nature was the most important part of Marion's work. Next time you see an insect or leaf, take a minute for a really close look. You might see that lots of living things have something called symmetry. It's like there's an imaginary line down the middle, and they look the same on each side. It's really common, and sometimes it makes living things really hard to draw. So today, we're going to make a symmetrical butterfly. You'll need a white piece of paper, a pencil, a crayon, black or another dark color is best, and an eraser. If you have a big eraser instead of the one on the back of your pencil, that works best. Plus, it's good to have something to color in your butterfly. If you have watercolors, great, but anything will do. Though, if you are going to use watercolors, you might also want to put thicker paper under where you're working so you don't make too much of a mess. First, fold your paper in half. That fold will be your line of symmetry. So you're going to draw half of a butterfly on one side from the fold. When you like how it looks, you're going to trace over it with a dark crayon. You want to press really hard to make the line as dark as you can. When you're done, fold your paper in half again. So you can kind of see your lines even through the paper. What you're gonna do is rub really hard with your eraser all over everywhere you drew. Now when you unfold your butterfly, you'll see 
a really light version on the other side. And follow those lines with crayon. So now you have a symmetrical butterfly. Now it's time to color your butterfly in. Crayon and watercolor are a great mix. The waxy crayon resists water, so it can help you make intricate designs without your paint mixing. But if you're going to do that, you want to make sure all of your lines touch. You might also want to erase any pencil that didn't get covered up by the crayon. Now for some color. Remember, if you're doing symmetry, that means besides the same shape on each side, it means usually the same color on each side too. Once you've colored your butterfly, you can play with crayon and paint to make it some wind to fly on. Just use a white crayon and blue paint, or you can draw it a leaf or a flower to sit on. Start paying attention to what types of leaves and flowers do you see caterpillars and butterflies on. It could be a clue to what they eat and where they need to live. Experiment, enjoy, and remember to stop and look around you.